Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another tutorial of Grasshopper and today we are taking a look at this tower which I didn't do before so which is quite interesting. So it is a tower that we can move around and change as you see and we have a rotation and it's like a polygon that goes in there and also the amount of things that we have here and the heights. So let's get into it and see you after the intro. So, okay, let's start by making a new grasshopper file. We will show you all the things that we have here and how we make them. Maybe even add to a few things as well, a little bit, but for now we're just going to go with that. So, so first of all, I'm just going to sketch out in the file more or less what we want to do here. So we have basically a certain polygon and this polygon, we want to basically then move upwards a few times, just going to copy them here. And we also want to, depending on when it goes up or down, we basically want to scale them in the middle points to make them bigger or smaller. And then we also want to rotate them as well. So each one of those gets rotated a little bit more and more. So by that we will just start with a very basic, um, so we just double click the canvas, type in polygon like this. And here we have our first uh, polygon that we want to move. It will be here at the zero zero of our grasshopper area or rhino area and then we just double click it again and we're gonna type in a number like let's say 10.0 and we slide this in into the radius and if you have seen the radius we can basically make it bigger or smaller depending on how we want to have the base size basically our first our first uh, polygon that we wanted to move upwards. So the next thing then is we're gonna move them one by one uh, basically here upwards. So we're gonna do this by creating a list that basically says okay this is, will be level zero and then level one will be at height three, level two will be at height six and nine and so on. So we're gonna do this by uh, the command series. And it takes uh, three components. So the start, which is zero, 0, which is 0 by default already. Then the steps, which would be this difference between those, and the count. So this will be the amount of how many of those things we are having here. So we're going to uh, do put in, uh, take another number slider, type in 4 for the counts, and the steps we will take in like 3, 0. And this one we just leave because it's going to be 0 anyway. As you, if you hover over it, you see it's just zero. And then we have to move them upwards. And we move them because basically the this red one here is the X direction. And this, the green one, is the Y direction. So we're going to move them upwards in the Z direction, which goes into this direction here. So we can use this unit Z. And then we use the component move. So just going to move like this. And we use the polygon that we want to move and the motion would be the unit of this one here and as you see now we have our moved uh, like our things that are moved upwards and we can obviously increase the amount or decrease it as well and here we can also change the height of the floors so this looks already pretty good and we want to continue this by um, making a rotation of those things as well so this will be the rotate one here. And we're just gonna, for now, we're just gonna use the series command, or actually it would make more sense to duplicate the step one, uh, step slider and the series slider, control uh, C, control V, and just move it a little bit over here. And maybe we just rename this, and this will be our rotation. And we're going to use the moved polygons upwards we're gonna use them into the rotate one here and we're gonna right click the angle and put it into degrees and use the series of this other one here as well 
This looks kind of weird right now. We're just gonna uh, double like click on both of those and then middle click hide button or you can also use control Q as well. And next thing is you see you have we have our nice rotated um, pieces here as well. So this works already pretty great. I want to increase the number slider for the height as well. So I have a little bit few more here as well, like a bit bigger tower, which is great. Anyhow, now we also want to, because we have the problem right now, it just all looks very even. We also want to may have a certain wave in there as well. And we're going to change this by using the command scale which we can use in the geometry here. And as you see, it scales kind of weird we also, because we need basically the middle points of those things as the center, because right now the center is, if you hover over the center here, it's, it's at zero, zero, zero. So it always scales basically from the zero points. So, but we want this point to be at each of those things here at the, at the middle points. So we can use the command area, for example, which basically takes out the points or uh, like the middle points as well. I think another one uh, would be also very good to use. Actually, let's do it the correct way. We will just construct a point which will be at zero, zero, zero. So this one is in the in that point already. And we're gonna move it upwards just like we moved up the polygons here. So we're just gonna copy this one and we're gonna use geometry of this point here. And when we activate it, you see it creates those points all the way up here. And this now will be functioning as the center of our points here. So great, now we have those defined. However, the factor at the moment is all the same. And I also, I, if I would just use the series of the other things, it would just go into one direction. So what I want to have is basically just draw this down um, this kind of shape like that for example like this and I want to have that they're connected like this very easy basically however we can do this by using the graph components this is just graph graph mapper and if you right click it we can actually use a different types of graph so if you go for example the sinus you see it gives us the the option of having this sinus function here that we might want to use actually. So in order to use this, we need to give it an input of numbers between zero and one, and it outputs the remapped uh, points to this graph basically. So we can do this by simply using we go to maths and under domain and it basically remaps those numbers and automatically um, maps those numbers to zero and one and we have to use we need to use know the source and the value and this is actually pretty easy we can just take the source of um, the series here and then we just use the boundary bounds like this and so this will be our numbers that we have and that will be the source and also the values, but those values go in there directly and the target is already defined like that. And we're gonna put this into the graph number here. So now we have our mapped numbers here. So this is pretty good. And we're going to use this as the factor. And if we just disable this one here quickly, we see we have exactly the thing that we wanted to have before which works pretty nicely and really great. And you can just play around with it and have it until you have it exactly to your liking. So that's already pretty good. However, we also want to give it a little bit more than just, just this shape. So maybe we can also put in like a thing in the middle and then also some walls in there. Let's see how far we can get. So first we want to create a, basically a mesh around it or not a mesh really in this case, but it will be a shape. So we're gonna use the command loft, which can be used as the geometry here. And you see it will just very nicely slide over it, just how we want to have it. So that's pretty good already. Um, but we might also want to, to have some further um, 
advancement or some fur further knowledge in here as well. So we're gonna, what I would like to do now is uh, we have this already set up, so this is, works already pretty great, but I also want to have, if we have, for example, one of those things, and then the next one, I want to have a connection pipe that goes through here. And I might want to have one in the middle as well. So I have like two of those connection pipes here. So this is, this is possible with, or maybe we can even do something more sophisticated actually. But no, I think for now we just keep it like as simple as that. So we're going to use uh, the explode method, which basically gives us um, the vertices like those points at the end. And we're going to connect those together by using polyline. And if you connect those node together, oopsie, it doesn't, it just will create the same thing again, but there is a way of making those vertically connected. So we're going to use the command flip matrix, which basically changes the tree around. So right now we have like uh, 20, uh, 21 list values with seven things in them. And this will create it so there will be just seven list values with 21 things in them. So it basically flips, flips it around. And as if you put it in here, you see already it has those things in there perfectly. So now we have those defined, but I also want to have uh, one little bit there in the middle. So we're gonna use just the point on curve commands. Uh, point on curve, it will be this one. It's under curve analysis. And by the way, this one you can go, if you go control alt click, it shows you where it is. So it can show me all those things where it actually resides. Um, so you're going on the uh, segments that we defined in here before, and you see it will create as a middle point in here as well that we can move like around. So it always creates for each of those things a middle point. Just gonna put this in the middle here. And then we're just gonna do the same thing again here with the pole line and just put it in here and we have to flip it again, obviously. And then we have it here this very nice point in the middle. I'm just gonna hide a few things so this will not get too messy here. Okay, good. Now we have our defined things and we also wanna give it like a certain like depth to it as well. So you, so basically like a, like a window, um, like thickness, let's say. So we can use the command pipe and we're gonna to use the those pull lines here. This will probably be really big. Okay, we make it a little bit smaller. Put a number slider in here. And to make this one a little bit slick. That maybe. It will get a bit laggy, so just keep this in mind. Uh, this will not be as uh, if you if you're not. That's actually a good way to do it. Let me show you this. We just have a data dam. And this dam will be basically a in-between function like this, you see. And when we click it, it puts those things over, then it calculates it, and you see it takes 2.3 seconds. And then when we think, okay, hmm, but I want to change this form a little bit like that, or like this, so it's exactly in my liking, a little bit more like that, and then you just can click it like this again and then it calculates it again and it will be a little more uh, easier than just doing it all over again. So I think that's pretty that's pretty useful to do. Anyhow, now we have our very nice things defined, but I also want to have the, the slabs as well uh, to be functioning correctly. So this will be basically our windows, this will be our the auto construction. And then we also want to have the slabs as well, like those things. So we're just going to use the boundary, boundary surface commands, and it basically creates those things as well. And you might also want to add a little uh, thickness to it. So there could be the offset curve commands, offset surface, 
and then we're just gonna offset the surface by a certain amount maybe the same amount of the thickness of those things and we also need to extrude them as well so it, it's not only this empty shell as you see here there needs to be something on it as well so we're gonna use direction Z and the same distance here as well and as you see it will create a really nice thing on it furthermore we're going to just merge those things together so they will be in one nice tidy up place like this and we're gonna hide the other things and this already works quite well so and yeah, uh, there might be like one thing as well. There's a thing called elevator. So we want to create like a small ele elevator shaft as well. I think this could be possible by using the, yeah, I think we're just gonna create uh, another. Yeah, we're just gonna use a small offset of our very much of our existing core that we had here in the beginning. And we're just gonna use Curve offset loose. I think this is the one which works quite good. However, it might not work correctly here. Well, let's just use this offset here. There are two types. That's like not so very much important, but anyway. And we're gonna use a number slider here as well. It might need to be negative. I'm not that sure at the moment. Yes, it needs to be negative. Just put a negative in here before. And then we're gonna use this as the distance. So this works already quite good. And you see it will create this small thing here in the middle, which will be basically our elevator shaft. So you're just gonna hide this one here. And we also need to uh, yeah, flip it again, or do we? No, we just need to just flatten this one here. And make it a little bigger like that. So it will have some kind of core, uh, like a realistic core to it so yeah i think this already cuts it in a way so just let's let's just bake those things and then we just see more or less of how it could look like uh in the in the rhino environment so we're just gonna make this middle click bake that so we're just gonna bake that there as well Wait, didn't i bake it i didn't bake it right click bake Yes, I want to group it, this one as well, bake, yes, bake this one as well, bake everything man, just bake everything. And I also want to do this, uh, the loft that we had here as well. Did it bake it? Actually, didn't do it, did it? Okay, I'm not that sure. Anyhow. And if you go on to the rendered view, yeah, I think this already looks pretty good actually. Let me just put a rectangle here as well. And just wanna, because I wanna get, see the distance to it. Yeah, I think this works pretty good. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanna make a little kind of um, under the material is gonna cr create a click material here that will be like glass ish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay it doesn't really have some issues with it anyway this works already quite well um, yeah uh, I will upload the uh, there will be a link in the download section uh, in the comment section um, and I will just put in this thing here so you can just download it directly uh, if you didn't follow it completely or something's don't work, there's there there would be um, just the normal components, so you can just work those out uh, very easily. So thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, I guess if you watch it to the end, if you want more of those videos, subscribe obviously or like it, whatever. And have a beautiful day, and hope you hope this helped you out a little bit. And see you in the next one.